Hey everybody, this is Dustin O'Brien with CoinBrief. I'm here with Francesco Rulli. Is that how you say your name correctly? Francesco Rulli, yes. All right. He is the founder of Bitlanders. It's a social network that has Bitcoin integrated into it, so it pays you for using it, basically. And I'm going to be asking him some questions and trying to figure out how this all works. Um, if you want to get started, I want to ask, before Bitlanders, what were you involved with? Okay, um, originally I'm from Florence, Italy, and uh, in 1995 I started a fashion company called MTI USA Incorporated here in New York. And um, we represent in textile and garment manufacturing. In 2001 uh, I started a business with the actor John Malkovich, his clothing line, uh, flipping ankle kimono. And uh, in 2005 we started an online film distribution company for independent filmmakers called Film Annex. Uh, we worked with online advertising companies for the last nine years, and uh, last August we decided to launch Bitlanders, that uh, is uh, basically our entrance in the world of Bitcoin and the blockchain, along with uh, merging uh, social media and uh, the same content that we had on Filmanix, independent filmmakers, bloggers, and so on. Right. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a great idea, actually had thought about a Bitcoin social network like a year ago. I was wondering when someone would actually do it, but that's, uh, that's amazing. Um, so how did you, but how did you come up with the idea for that? Though? Like, I mean, obviously you had experience in media, but how did you pull that together with Bitcoin? Well, three years ago we started uh, collaborating with uh, Roya Mahbub in Afghanistan, building classrooms to teach young women uh, how to use the internet and enter the world of social media. We were rewarding them uh, with uh, a percentage of the advertising revenues generated by those pages. And, uh, you know, I thought that it was fair for a content producer, a blogger, a filmmaker uh, to be rewarded for their work, especially if they're reporting or they are documenting information from very dangerous countries or locations so that uh, can have a high value. Um, we started the sending money to Roya back in Afghanistan and we realized that there was a certain level of danger to do the money redistribution because obviously uh, she would have to go to the bank with bodyguards and then uh, bring the money to the schools and you know reward the students for their work and um, the whole conversation about Bitcoin started uh, end of 2013 uh, we started uh, thinking well you know, this is something that is really interesting. Why don't we get into it? And uh, by December 2013, we decided to switch the company, Film Annex at that time, from US dollars into Bitcoin. The concept were going to be the first social media network, not just to receive Bitcoin, but also to give Bitcoin, to reward people accordingly. And uh, it took a few months to implement that. Uh, it was a fairly easy process on our end. It was a little bit more complicated for users on the other end to understand what Bitcoin is, how to use it and do the best out of it. We learned that sometimes users are supposed to be given an alternative in the way that they can use their Bitcoin, so not always they can spend them like here in the United States. And we created some products, for example, we allow them to exchange them for PayPal cards if they prefer or they can just shop online for avatar accessories, for uh, gift, card, uh, gift cards from companies like Overstock.com, for example, or Skype. And we built from there a community that is very active. Uh, is basically an ecosystem. Right. Yeah, I've noticed that it's, it is quite active. Um, I looked at your Alexa ranking, and you shot up through the rankings in less than a year. Um, I, I don't remember what you're at right now, but you're in the top 10,000, and that's really impressive. Um, yeah, we're growing of 1,000 people uh, people a day, and um, we're offering two options. So one is the anonymous registration, in which you just pick a nickname and then a password, and we don't know who you are, we don't have your email address. You can only come in touch with us if you log in, if not, we can track you down. The other way is actually, you can actually log in through your Facebook or Google Plus uh, login, and at the time, uh, we gather the information on your friends, and then uh, we incentivize you to invite them to join in the network. And uh, we have a, a database of about 125 million people at this point. Oh, so, wow. you know, the registered users is half a million, 
and uh, the database of 125 million. Very impressive. Um, I I'm enjoying it so far. I'm, I've had a lot of fun with it. Um, so I was going to ask how you fund Bitlanders, but I guess you kind of explained it. Though I didn't see any ads on there. Um, well, there is a um, we. It's a big investment on uh, our company and uh, of utilizing uh, our revenues from the past into creating a cleaner um, platform. We're now re -inclu including again the ads. We work with a few companies that provide us banners. We work with a few companies that are providing us pre-roll. That is the 30, 15, 45 second video before the content. Right. And that we are just now in the in the um, in the process of implementing stickers and emoticons, uh, uh, first for sale, and then we're going to the branded ones, so that we can actually generate revenue with advertising generated from those. Uh, another source of income is the sale of the avatar accessories, and uh, is also the sale of the gift cards, in which we have a little bit of a discount when you sell the gift cards. Right. Okay, yeah, and the avatar accessories to kind of put the game component into it, make people want to build up their character, kind of. Yes, uh, we are implementing on a daily basis now. We are implementing new uh, quest on our system. If you took, uh, look at the top right of the screen, you'll see there are different quests like uh, uh, watch your five videos today, read your five blogs today. Uh, we love Bitcoin. Uh, check out this page and so on. And uh, when you do those quests uh, and you fulfill the full quest, uh, you are given uh, uh, prizes. Sometimes those prizes are in gems, sometimes they are in bus points, uh, or sometimes they are in satoshis, like for example when you create your own avatar. So we're still away, three months away from finishing those uh, quests. We're learning from uh, the users, but also we are learning from uh, the um, uh, we're trying to acquire as many, uh, let's say, companies as possible who actually can sell or present their their products and services on our platform, so that the, the transaction in Bitcoin can happen uh, sim in a much simpler way. Um, you know, like I I have been tweeting back and forth with Paul Vigna of the Wall Street Journal about the fact that um, you know he was presenting how in the Wall Street Journal there was a Ferrari was very expensive Ferrari, I say, you know, I would like to buy a Dodge Challenger and then in Bitcoin. And uh, now the uh, one of the things for me is how do we find a way to put some pressure on different vendors so that uh, products like even a car from a dealership can actually be available in the currency that we're discussing. So right. this takes a big effort, it takes millions of people to put the pressure on a company so that they can simply offer that option, and which is fairly simple. But uh, most people don't take the time to think it through just because they're too lazy and set on their ways. Right, you're, you're right. It is very easy, but yeah, it is going to take a certain effort to get people to accept it. I think uh, a few recent breakthroughs might have might help a bit. Um, Microsoft was a big one that kind of got a lot of people's attention. Uh, yes, but let, let me say this: uh, there is a um, if we talk about uh, okay. All right, go ahead with your next question because I would like to talk about the PR problem of Bitcoin at a certain point and how I see on my angle a solution based on my experience with this uh, social media. Oh, wait, you can go ahead and explain that. Um, well, like basically, every panel I participate to, every conversation I hear, every article I read about, just like, for example, the $75 million raised by Coinbase, they're always talking about the successful venture capital uh, ventures around Bitcoin of how Fred Wilson or Mark Andreessen or Barry Silbert feel about Bitcoin and what's the future about those, you know, Tim Draper and so on. But in reality, I think that uh, we're missing the point that Bitcoin is actually more of a bottom-up uh, product. So the priority should be actually how do we service, how do we educate uh, students and young people in in the numbers of millions of people to understand better Bitcoin and the safety of the blockchain. Uh, consequently, uh, for me, is become a little bit of a mission to make uh, uh, Bitlanders a Bitcoin company that uses social media to educate people about the blockchain more than a social media network that use Bitcoin. So when we're talking about Microsoft taking Bitcoin, uh, 
uh, I would love to see Microsoft educating people about the values of Bitcoin and the blockchain because what they're doing, they're taking the Bitcoin, they're basically dumping back into the market, they're pushing the value of Bitcoin down and the average Joe out there thinks that Bitcoin is having a problem because the value is going down when they actually don't see that there is a much deeper implication about the quality of the blockchain and what provides to a company like Microsoft. Right. So there would be an important thing in Microsoft, Dell, Expedia. They would be dragged into an educational perspective about why they selected Bitcoin and what Bitcoin can do actually for the safety of their users and customers. Right. Um, have you uh, have you reached out to Overstock and spoken with uh, Patrick Byrne? Um, we yeah we in the very beginning we reached out to those guys, but we didn't get any answers. We have spoken to someone in their advertising department about promoting their gift cards, on which we present a true gifter, but not directly with them. Uh, I would say that, uh, uh, yeah, they're doing a great effort, but I believe that uh, that's what we're building now is a curriculum to educate people in a fun and uh, simple way about the advantages of Bitcoin and the blockchain. Right. Um, the book that came out, The Age of Cryptocurrency, gave us uh, our uh, the preface to our initiative, uh, the education initiative in Afghanistan. And I'm proud to say that uh, the two writers, Paul Vigna and Michael Casey, really grasped, uh, grasped the priorities there, putting a young woman in Afghanistan uh, on the first page of the book instead of mentioning how Bill Gates or, you know, let's say, Mark Andreessen supports the currency. So, you know, my goal is to start from the bottom and bring Bitcoin up and eventually, yes, we need uh, venture capitalists and uh, very intelligent people to build those companies that are service companies around Bitcoin. Also, we need uh, an organic educational uh, curriculum so that uh, people over the age of 13 and up can understand what Bitcoin is, use it, and enjoy the advantages. Right. Uh, that That's pretty much what we've been trying to do for the past year or so now as well. It's it's difficult, I guess, help helping people really understand what Bitcoin is, but the way you guys have presented this, it is very um very easy. It seems fun. You know, they're they're cartoony avatars and it walks you step by step through what you need to do to get, you know, small amounts of Bitcoin and uh, I I was really, really impressed. Um Thank you. Well, let me yeah. tell you a little bit about the avatars. So the reason why we implemented avatars was another lesson learned from working with uh, developing countries where uh, sometimes uh, users, it's unsafe for users, especially women, to post their pictures and uh, share personal information. So based on this extreme experience of working with Afghanistan as well as uh, uh, Pakistan, uh, you know, Malala was shot in Pakistan, to give you an idea. Indonesia and uh, also we have plenty of users uh, in Africa, North Africa, uh, in Central Africa as well as South America. We realized that uh, it was both business and uh, good deed to protect our users uh, and their identity with avatars. So we created a new piece of economy and then also we started giving a value to their work. So if you post a blog, if you post a video, we're going to rank it within our system and we're going to give uh, a competitive scoring system called the bus score so that uh, you can actually gain a certain percentage of the money available in Bitcoin in our platform. And uh, this uh, has created uh, two circumstances, a safe environment and a competitive environment so that people can compete to gain more revenues. Uh, with the reintroduction of advertising our platform, we're looking to increase the amount of Bitcoin we distribute so that actually the best users can actually benefit even farther of the benefits. Okay. But the avatars were conceived in the same line of what Bitcoin for us is a safety environment. Right. Keep it as anonymous as the person wants it to be, basically. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. What we are interested in is not so much who they are, but what they want. And based on that, we tailor our initiatives so that we can gather the right content or the right, right benefits or products that the user desires to have. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's good. Could you explain to me a bit about the gems and uh, the scoring metrics? Like how, do you, how do you determine that? How, 
how are those rewarded? What do they do exactly? I mean, I know you said that the score determines how much Bitcoin you get per day, but what are the gems? Um, well, what happened is, like everything, when you go on one end of the spectrum, you always have a little bit of pushback on the other side. So we, we, once we started giving Bitcoin, and we started educating people about the value of Bitcoin, we also had a little bit of an influx of spammers creating an uncomfortable circumstance in terms of uh, uh, posting too many uh, spam messages like buzz me back or just for the sake of it. There was not really a quality production as we wanted. So recently we introduced the concept of the user paying us to review their content and if the content is approved the, uh, the payback is much higher than what they have paid us. So we, we thought from a commercial perspective was more to, um, to have a certain cost uh, made in gems instead of Bitcoin because people are always a little bit resistant to separate themselves from their money. Right. So what happens, you come into the platform and we rank you based on the quality of your content and this is the bus score. It's an algorithm that we are patenting and uh, there's about two years of experience into this algorithm and there are live uh, editors that check your content, rate it and give you an X amount of points so that uh, you gain X amount of growth in, within the system. That's the bus score. The gems instead are something that you can purchase or you can be given a rewards upon your quest uh, in little batches. And those gems is what you use to buy things like, for example, the avatar accessories or to grant uh, a request for review by our editors. So in essence, the platform, and I say we're still three months away, is a fairly complex uh, circumstance because we have uh, the gems, we have the bus score, and we have the Bitcoin slash Satoshis that are being distributed and all interact with each other. When we tweak our uh, algorithms, we can see drastic changes in the behavior of the users. So we are little by little introducing different vari variables so that we can satisfy their expectations. Ultimately, I would like to have also a platform where our users can trade, um, let's say, digital currencies between each other. This is going to happen later on. I do, I'm not a believer in uh, fiat currencies, so I believe that uh, actually uh, you, once you are on the blockchain, you should stay on the blockchain and you should not transition from US dollar into Bitcoin back into US dollars. So eventually you could say that uh, what down the road we probably uh, are going to look into offering this opportunity to trade different digital currencies so that the user once acquired a specific amount of seed money from their work on the platform, then I can actually multiply the revenues hedging different currencies. All right, so you're not just trying to build a Bitcoin social network, you're trying to build, uh, you said ecosystem earlier, but you're trying to build a whole cryptocurrency world basically, where people can exactly. do everything from earn it to, to spend it, to trade it for other currencies, to whatever they want. Exactly. Yeah, this goes back into the concept of digital citizenship. Uh, there is an understanding. I'm a very lucky man. I was born in Florence in 1968. Only 2,000 people were born in that year in that uh, town. It's the center of Tuscany, the cradle of Renaissance. So I was very, very, very lucky. I spent the, the second half of my life here in New York City, and uh, it can't get any better. But not everybody gets to enjoy life at the same level, and uh, they don't get to choose their name, or their country, their beliefs uh, many times are imposed. So I thought that one solution to this is to actually allow people to have their own digital citizenship. Digital citizenship means digital real estate, that it means how many blogs, how many videos, how much content you have online and what's that worth. And then an understanding of how you generate revenues from that. So Facebook, Twitter, all those platforms, they know very well how to generate revenues but the average user doesn't know. So that's our job to explain them what to do so if the blog or the video is higher quality, you increase your revenues. And then the currency allows you to live into this ecosystem. And obviously there is different variations of the currencies because not every currency has been built for the same purpose. So Bitcoin is good for one thing, dark coin or ripple is good for something else. That goes back into the understanding of uh, what you can do in your life. 
for example, in the United States, credit score is as, as important as, even more important than how much money you have in the bank. So it doesn't necessarily mean that to having a million dollars in the bank is actually as good as having $200,000 with a better credit score. So the same thing goes in the digital currency industry. You gotta understand that you gotta educate people about the values of Bitcoin, of the blockchain, but also the other digital currencies and the credit history they can build behind it. One last thing, I think the bus score can be seen as also credit history for the users. We have users that have been working with us for three years. We know how their productivity is in terms of digital real estate, how reliable they are when it comes to requesting or sending payments, acquisition purchases. So introducing Bitcoin are located on top of the blockchain in terms of safety, but also tracking their credit history of the user allow us to create an economy in which, in theory, we could even start lending money down the road. That would that would definitely be interesting. Um, I think one other group tried that one time, but it didn't ever work. I mean, it, it kind of worked, kind of didn't. There were a lot of issues with that, but with with something to lose, with a, like you were saying, digital real estate, they've got their profile, they've got all their work behind it. That does give the incentive for someone to actually repay the loan. Exactly, exactly, exactly. That's a point. And uh, I'm looking at this. We're not lending money to anybody. We're not acting as a financial institution. But uh, we understand that uh, we're building a, a history for people that uh, down the road that could be very, very useful to make sure that the right guys uh, are treated well and the bad guys are not uh, treated as well. <laughs> I, I like that. Yeah. Um, well, you pretty much answered the rest of my questions through all of that because um, I wanted to ask what you were doing with the project and how you wanted to implement it in the future, but yeah, you've you've went through all of that, so uh, okay. Yeah, um, do you guys uh, are you planning on implementing it with say WordPress and IFTTT? I don't know if you know what that is because I was trying to get that set up earlier. Uh, technical questions is best to address to my Italians. I have a full <laughs> team of developers in, back in Italy and uh, in Taiwan. And uh, usually I coordinate more like the marketing aspect and the design perspective. Uh, but you know, if there are some suggestions you have or anybody else from the Bitcoin community, it's always welcome for us to look into it. Like now we're looking into the, val the possibility of introducing some tipping tools is it something good or not for us? We want to stay away from regulation, uh, regulatory issues. So we want to make it as simple as possible. But uh, you know, any suggestion for us is great. Okay. Well, um, I will put an email address in in this interview at the bottom of it in the description. So if anybody has any suggestions or questions for Bitlanders, you can send it to that. And I guess we'll stop the interview there Thank and you. let you get back to your work. But it was very, very nice having you. Perfect. And if you ever happen to have been in New York City, swim by. Every Friday we have a party at our office, and I would love to meet you in person. Yeah, I'd love to meet you too. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Yeah.